He was dubbed Hollywood's original bad boy and is widely considered the greatest movie actor of all time. Having studied with the likes of famed acting coach Stella Adler in the 1940s, he would rise to fame as Stanley Kowalski in the 1951 film of Tennessee Williams' play A Streetcar Named Desire. Other early notable roles included his performance as Terry Malloy in On the Waterfront, for which he received his first Academy and Golden Globe Awards, along with his portrayal as the highly infectious and rebellious Johnny Strabler in The Wild Ones. No stranger to controversy, with a career spanning 60 years with countless accolades behind his name, Marlon Brando remains one of the few elite actors who respected the work behind the craft. Known for his troublesome behavior off and on set, Brando would develop a reputation for being less than desirable to work with. Brando was perhaps the most celebrated among the method actors. Along with his slurred, mumbling delivery, he truly set himself apart in a class on his own. However, in the 1960s, Brando's career had begun to decline with his previous two films, One-Eyed Jacks and Mutiny on the Bounty, massively flopping at the box office. Brando became semi-blacklisted among Hollywood directors because of his repeated bizarre requests while on set. Brando was often unwilling to memorize his lines and reportedly preferred cue cards held by cast and crew while he performed his scenes. Not completely unfamiliar with Brando's weird onset antics and childish demands, director Francis Ford Coppola pleaded with studio execs to cast Brando in his upcoming film titled The Godfather as the family patriarch Don Vito Corleone. Naturally, the studio executives resisted, proclaiming that Brando would only be considered should he agree to do three of the following, do the film for free, put up a personal bond protecting the studio from losses, and perform an on-screen test. Of course, Brando would never do the film for free. However, after a successful screen test at Brando's California mansion, Coppola filmed Brando showing the actor use black shoe polish in his hair while stuffing cotton balls in his cheeks. Coppola and studio execs had finally found their Don Corleone. Brando would later express that he wanted to make Don Corleone look like a bulldog, so he stuffed his cheeks with cotton wool for the audition. For the actual filming, he wore a mouthpiece made by a dentist and adopted the mannerisms in which he felt the character would display effectively to audiences. The film also starred a young Al Pacino as Michael Corleone, along with James Caan, portraying his brother Sonny. Talia Shire, whom we all love and recognize from the Rocky franchise films, portrays Connie Corleone. Upon its release in 1972, The Godfather would go on to break many box office records, becoming the highest grossing film of that same year. With a budget of $7.2 million, the film will go on to gross over $280 million for international box office ticket sales and remains regarded as one of the greatest and most influential films of all time. The film's success also helped revitalize Brando's career, instantly launching him atop Hollywood's A-list once again. Brando's performance was dazzlingly reviewed by critics. He would later recall that he wanted Vito Corleone to be revered as a kind of hero and a man to be respected. On March 5, 1973, Marlon Brando chose to decline the Best Actor Academy Award for his highly celebrated performance as Vito Corleone in The Godfather. Brando announced on the eve of the 45th Academy Awards that he would be boycotting the ceremony and sending a representative by the name of Sachin Littlefeather in his place. Littlefeather at the time of the event was a little known actress as well as the president of the National Native American Affirmative Image Committee. Brando would express the reason behind the boycott in relation to the treatment of American Indians and how they are often portrayed by the film industry in 1970s Hollywood. Upon walking on stage, famed English actor Roger Moore, who portrayed James Bond over the course of 12 years in seven films, presented Littlefeather Brando's Oscar Award, in which she respectfully declined and then read the following statement. Hello, my name is Sachin Littlefeather, and I'm representing Marlon Brando this evening. And he asked me to tell you in a very long speech, which I cannot share with you presently because of time, but I will be glad to share with the press afterwards, that he very regretfully cannot accept this very generous award. And the reasons for this being are the treatment of the American Indians today by the film industry. A mixture of applause and boos were heard from the crowd. She continued, due to the portrayal of the American Indian in today's television and in movie reruns, along with recent events, regarding the Wounded Knee Massacre, which saw hundreds of arrests and deaths of American Indians. I beg at this time that I have not intruded upon this evening 
and that we will, in the future, our hearts and understandings will meet with love and generosity. Thank you, on behalf of Marlon Brando. Little Feather would then walk towards backstage, followed by somewhat half-hearted applause. Brando's boycott of the ceremony was perceived as the ultimate insult to most within the film industry and movie-going public. Though this wasn't the first time Brando would stand up against civil injustice against minority groups. During the 1960s, Brando was a known supporter of protests against racial segregation and discrimination both within and outside the film industry. He would go on to march for desegregation and stood alongside Dr. Martin Luther King at the 1963 March on Washington and was also arrested as a result. Furthermore, in 1968, Brando would attend the Black Panther Party rally held as a memorial for Bobby Hutton, a young panther killed by police. Brando delivered the eulogy of the fallen panther and is often credited with actress Jane Fonda for helping to bring the Black Panther Party and their politics to a mainstream white audience. Brando expressed that he believed that the Black Panther organization are an earnest and dedicated people who are working for a life of dignity and respect for the black man. In conclusion, Brando was far from a perfect human being. He has certainly seen his fair share of personal tragedies along with incredible highs and lows. Shedding light on all the negatives of what Marlon Brando himself represented would be an incredible disservice to someone unfamiliar with his upbringing and family history. I believe you know a person's heart through their intentions. While 1970s Hollywood continued to focus on profits and nonsense, Brando was focused on being of better service to others he believed to be treated unfairly and used his celebrity to help uplift the messages of those that the white mainstream at the time was desperately trying to silence. Brando may have represented controversy and narcissism tendencies, but he also represented a much needed wave of change, influencing countless legends still represented in today's film society. So do I believe Brando's boycott of the 1973 Oscars to be a heroic crusade? Not at all. Personally, I believe it was the evolution of a flawed human being displaying perfect honesty in a moment where his contemporaries were forced to face their own ignorance, allowing them one of only two options, evolve in their own awareness or continue to rejoice at the expense of countless minorities simply wanting to be treated as equals. And with that, we'd like to thank you all for stopping by. Please be sure to check out some of our other content as well as like, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Please share your thoughts and ideas about the video in the comment section below. This is Enzo with Rat Pack Matinee. We'll see you guys soon.